Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Now today we're going to be painting and weathering my clone trooper armor. We're going to be painting on the 212th garrison colors. And then we're going to use some various painting and weathering techniques to make it look like it's been through a significant part of the Clone Wars. So let's go. So for this, I've got to start masking up my piece. I've just got some painter's tape, this is frog tape, and some liquid latex. And this is all we need to start doing this. Now I've got my chest piece here, and I'm going to use the 501st CRL to help me mask up the correct areas for paint for the garrison colours. So I'm just looking at the CRL here on the 501st website. Uh, it's got sort of a few basic measurements to start blocking in these shapes. I started measuring on here and also just going by eye to see what looks right. Um, so this whole section is going to be orange. There's a little bit more to do on the sides of this one and then that's it for sort of blocking in the shapes. So I also have this for reference. This is the 6th scale 212 trooper and he's just handy to have as another form of reference where I can start just seeing how some of these shapes work in three dimensions. So I've got my areas masked up how I want them. So this section and the two side sections are going to be orange. Now we've got to preemptively add the battle damage. For this we're just going to be using liquid latex and I'm just going to use a stick, nothing too fancy, to apply it to the surface to give the impression that the paint's been scratched. And then once we painted it all we should be able to just peel it off and leave some cool scarring on the paint job. That's all our latex applied, we've got some quite heavy uh, scratching that's going to be going on up here. But it's been applied strategically all over to every section. And that's it, this piece is now ready for paint. So we did the chest piece as a kind of proof of concept to test out my paint scheme and to test out all this latex chipping and stuff. It's worked really well so now I've just got to do the rest of the pieces. Now for this armour there's quite a few pieces that need to go orange and they are the back, the belt, the shoulders and upper arms, the cod piece, the thighs, the knees and the shins. So I'm just going to start masking these up just like I did the chest armour and then we're going to get to painting. Hey, 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 hey. This masking is tedious, but uh, it's got to be done. We'll enjoy it later when we get to peel it off.
So in terms of painting on the 212 colors, that is done. I've gone ahead and peeled off all the latex that was put down to reveal this lovely weathering. It looks great, I'm so happy with how it's going so far. We've got a lot of pieces painted in this orange. But next comes the weathering. For this, I'm not gonna do anything fancy. We're just gonna be using black and brown acrylic paints. These I'm just gonna put on using some really wet coat and then also some dry brushing. I think I'm mainly gonna use the black and then just a little bit of the brown to help it along. Now I could use my airbrush, but I've just got this one and I'm gonna have a go. You can get some quite good effects just using acrylic paint and a brush. So time to get all prepped up for the weathering. So you can see me trying out different ways to weather this armor with the black acrylic. I started off using quite a lot of the black washes to see how that was sitting. It ended up being quite hard to clean off. It really sort of clung to that white. There was no clear coat between the white and the black, so it tended to hit and stick around. I found I could clean it off for the most part using a damp paper towel, or I do actually have a scouring pad there that is also wet, and that did quite a good job of taking off the paint that I didn't want there. It didn't take it off completely, but it did take it right back, which I found quite useful. Towards the end, I found myself doing mostly just dry brushing rather than the, the washes, because I could control way more easily where the paint was going to go, and then still take it off in much the same way and just focus on much smaller areas rather than trying to cover the large areas all at once. You can see I was quite careful here with some of the weathering. This blast mark on the chest piece is quite a centerpiece for the armour. You can see I so gradually built up the black to make it look natural. Uh, you can see me putting it on, taking it off. If it went on too heavy it kind of nearly almost all came off again and it, it just added little bits at a time until I got it to where I liked it. You can also go back in and remove paint strategically in the form of scratches. Uh, you can scratch your weathering back off again uh, to make it look more like scrapes through that dirtiness. This works especially well for the blast marks if you want to make it look like uh, something's really hit the armour and left a mark. You would have scratches in the armour itself. This mark actually continues up onto the helmet and it's very similar weathering on the helmet with the black blast mark with the scratches taken out of it as well. So I don't know if you can see, it's very subtle, but I'm just adding some black weathering in here and there's some just under here and it just makes all the details of the kit pop. It's such a beautiful kit. But yeah, that just subtle weathering in here and in all these gaps. I always forget quite how many pieces are in this kit whenever I come to do everything to all of it. It's taking quite a while to paint and weather these all up. See, I'm just subtly highlighting the detail lines and putting some accents on these bevels. Get slightly more shadow on there. It just gives, you can see the sort of definition line that then it gives here. That was a lot of pieces. Here's a sneak peek of how the weathering turned out. I'm really happy. We've got the orange banding on there and that's got some lovely chipping to it. And then you can see it got sort of like centerpiece points like this blast mark that goes up here, which was tied in to how I did the orange. Yeah. You can see the black wash sitting in all the details here. It looks great. So the only thing I have to do now is to clear cut everything. Everything has had this black weathering and we've got to just seal it all in to make sure the paint job stays. In terms of the actual build, the next thing I'm probably going to do is show you how everything is padded and strapped. But after that, I think we'll be pretty much done and I think I could probably do the full reveal for you. I hope you enjoyed watching this video on painting and weathering the Clone Trooper armor. Like I said, the finishing details coming for this armor very soon. And yeah, I hope to see you there. Please remember to like and subscribe if you did like the video. And of course, I'll see you in the next one. Take care, bye-bye.